Does the Bible condone slavery? The short answer is no, not least in the way that we think of slavery in the 21st century context. Many critics will say the Bible talks about slavery, therefore it justifies it. As we'll see, it's a little more complicated than that. Secondly, I just want us to keep in mind that although people have used the Bible to justify slavery, that the Bible itself does not justify it. And if we look at the church's teaching throughout history, the large picture of its teaching, there may have been a few people that have used it in a short time frame to justify it. But the larger teaching, and not only teaching, but the larger practice of the church, as we look at wherever Christianity has went, slavery and even and even treatment of uh, people that are lower than or less l- lower classes or impoverished people has always improved. So the church's teaching has always led uh, to more freedom, uh, less impoverished, less slavery. As we look at across the world, there are still many countries that have slavery. But what we see is these countries are not, one, Christian, nor has Christianity had a huge influence in these areas. Everywhere that Christianity has went, slavery has fallen by the wayside. But let's look at the Bible, because we're in a series of uh, series, uh, topics of misquoted or misapplied passages of the Bible. And so I think we're going to see this one here in Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 5 says, Slaves, obey your earthly masters with respect and fear and with sincerity of heart, just as you would obey Christ. Obey them not to only win their favor when their eyes are on you, but as slaves of Christ, doing the will of God from your heart. Serve wholeheartedly as if you were serving the Lord, not people, because you know that the Lord will reward each one of you for whatever good they do, whether they are slave or free. Now, it's important to read verse 9, because in verse 9, he changes the person he's talking to. And masters, treat your slaves in the same way. Do not threaten them, since you know that he who is both their master and yours is in heaven, and there is no favoritism with him. So you see, Paul clearly is laying out the reality of the situation he finds himself in. He's not writing a treatise of what life should look like, that if God was in control of society, this is how it should be. He's dealing with a Roman context. This term slave sometimes is translated as bondservant uh, in other translations. There's a little bit difference between a slave as we think of it and a bondservant in the Roman context, as the bondservant would be one that would have to serve for a certain amount of years, but would have the opportunity to buy their freedom. Um, And elsewhere, Paul shares and says, slaves, if you could get your freedom, get it. It's better to be free. Uh, But ultimately, the important thing is for you to focus on the Lord. Because if we're not focused on the Lord and our obligation to Him, that we're slaves to Him, that we're bond servants to Him, that we owe Him everything, then we're going to get caught up in cultural circumstances of right and wrong, uh, you know, kind of like what, how things should be. Oftentimes we look at that and we all want a just world. We all want a utopian society. But Paul's dealing with the realities of a first century Roman world. So he's saying, hey, I'm coming into this. Christ has come into this world. And if you find yourself in a position of being a bondservant or a slave and you come to Christ, then don't just say, hey, uh, Christianity Christianity has set me free. I don't have to obey you anymore. That's not going to go too well, right, with the person that has purchased you. Likewise, if you're a uh, slave owner, realize that you have to answer to God, that you're a slave to him, and you need to treat people with dignity and with respect. Now, this is far different than the situation we saw with American slavery. And this is what unfortunately happened in the American South, people took passages like this saying, hey, look, it says for slaves to obey their masters. But we had a completely different context and type of slavery. Chattel slavery, which was what we had in the U.S., was where people are treated as less than human, as cattle, and even justified through a certain uh, quasi-scientific reasoning as being part humans or, or not you know, uh, fully human. And it led to all types of justifications of things that should have never been justified. 
first and foremost, I should point out that if the Bible was truly followed, uh, the slave uh, sellers themselves would have faced the death penalty. For the law of God places the death penalty on any person that kidnaps another, whether they sell them or whether someone is found in their possession. So if you kidnap someone else, you get the death penalty. So in American slavery, there would be no possibility of having that. If they stole people from the island of Africa and brought them here to sell, the court should have executed the slave sellers. So there'd be no way to even have sold slavery if the Bible was followed. So when people talk about, well, look what the Bible led to. No, the Bible doesn't lead to that. They ignored one law because they're like, oh, well, these people aren't quite human, right? Uh, and, and so that justified them treating them like cattle or uh, th there, there was all types of arguments that went into that. And then once they're already here, then people start using the Bible to justify, well, they, they have to listen to us. It was a whole convoluted thing. And that's where it is important to understand the Bible and read it in context, because if they had, they would have never justified American slavery. So no, the Bible does not condone slavery, not in our modern sense of the word. And today, something else to keep in mind, even after America has banned slavery, there are more slaves in the world today than there were during the North Atlantic slave trade. So, and, and no one justifies it, right? No one says slavery is right, but it still happens. And so this is why it's important to not just try to blame the Bible or people that have misused the Bible for certain actions, because whether they're misusing the Bible, trying to use the Bible, evil people are gonna do evil things even without the Bible's permission. And I think slavery is unfortunately one of those issues that uh, people have used and continue to use uh, through other parts of the world uh, to justify wickedness. And again, many times today they'll just do it without even using the Bible to justify it. They're doing it against the law. They're doing it by smuggling people in. But even so, this slavery now is a little bit different form than what we saw previously when we're stealing people from islands and selling them here legally. So each generation faces a different form and type of slavery. And so one, what does the scripture say to that current situation? And two, uh, how can we as Christians better uh, oppose that, stop that? How can we stand for justice? I think first and foremost, we have to go back to what I said at the beginning. Wherever Christianity thrives, the mistreatment of those who are uh, perceived as lower than uh, it always improves. Because as the passage says here, God shows no favoritism. So if we truly believe that verse, as we should, we realize Paul's dealing with the reality of his world, saying none of us should be higher or lower. We're in a social caste that sees it that way. Managers are going to be managers. Entry-level workers are going to be entry-level workers. But in the Lord, we're all equal.